Good evening. The makers of the new Rinso bring you the Amos and Andy Show with their guest tonight, the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer star currently appearing in Heavenly Body, Miss Spring Byington. Andrew H. Brown rarely has anything to look forward to. However, this happens to be one of those occasions when he can hardly wait for the day to arrive. His nephew, Jimmy, a member of the armed forces, is coming to New York to spend his furlough with his Uncle Andy. At the moment, the proud uncle is in his office reading Jimmy's letter to Andy. Listen to this part of the letter, Amos. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. He say here... And so I will arrive in New York sometime Thanksgiving morning and will come right to your place. I sure will be happy to see you, Uncle Andy. Give my regards to your friend Amos, your loving nephew, Jimmy. Oh, that's great. He's coming up to New York for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, that's nice, Andy. Yeah, and look here. He done sent me his picture here in his uniform. Oh, let me see that. Boy, he's certainly good-looking, all right. Show sure is. Everybody say he looks exactly like me. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me this, Andy. Is you going to give your nephew a nice Thanksgiving dinner? Well, now, that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. Uh-huh. I is pretty proud of that boy, Amos. Oh, I know you is, Andy. And now, look here. You see, I live in one room, and I ain't got no stove or nothing. I ain't got no way of cooking no big Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, I know. And I kind of hate to ask you this, but... Uh, Go ahead. Well, I was wondering... I was wondering if you would put on the dinner at your place. I'd buy the turkey and pay for everything. You see, Amos is just on account of my nephew. I'm kind of proud of him, and I want to do it right. Oh, sure, Andy. Sure we'll do it. Oh, that show is nice of you, Amos. I really appreciate that. And I know Jimmy will, too. Yeah, I'm going to write him and tell him that we're going to have a big Thanksgiving dinner for him with turkey and everything. Yeah, I was just thinking, Andy, Thanksgiving Day is a week from yesterday, and I hear that turkey is is pretty scarce. Oh, I'll get one all right, Amos. Don't worry. The kingfish say that he's going to take me over to see his butcher. I thought the kingfish and his butcher wasn't speaking to each other. Well, they wasn't, but the kingfish made up with him at the beginning of the turkey season. (laughs) Well, now, all you got to do, Andy, is to get the turkey, and me and Ruby will take care of everything else. Oh, that's great. Put it there, son. Well, hello there, boys. How is you? Yeah. Well, hello there, Kingfish. Right. We're just talking about you. Who you was, huh? Speaking of the loving Kingfish. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, uh, did you see the picture of Andy's nephew, Jimmy? Yeah, look here. Here it is right here. He looked pretty good, don't he? He's my nephew on my mama and papa's side. <laughs> Yeah, nice picture here. He's a private already, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, Kingfish and his nephew is coming up here for Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, and I want to get a turkey for him. Uh, Kingfish, I want you to take me over to your butcher like you said you would. Oh, any time at all, Brother Andy. Yeah, I'll go with you now. Okay, that's good. Uh, by the way, do you know anything about how to pick out a good turkey, Kingfish? Yeah, sure I do. Brother Andy, whenever I picks out a turkey, I always kind of feels around the legs there. Uh, that's important. It is, huh? Oh, yeah, you take an athlete. Mm-hmm. Now, when he runs and exercises and all that stuff, he gets hard and tough. Yeah. So the idea in picking out a turkey is to get one that has done led a lazy life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kingfish, I got just one turkey left. Yeah, let us take a look at it, Carl. Mm. Uh, it's uh, my friend here, Mr. Brown. Uh, he got a nephew coming home from the Army on Thanksgiving, and he wants to get a nice tender bird. Yeah, how much did that turkey weigh that you has got there, mister? Oh, about 14 pounds. Mm-hmm. That's it right up there on that hook. Last one left. Boy, that looked good, all right. 
Uh, put it down here on the counter, Carl, so I can examine it. Yeah, sure, Will. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, uh, now let me see here. I want to feel around his legs here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this Turk has done a lot of running, didn't he? That's crime, Turk, and the only one I got left. You're lucky to get it. Yeah, I think I'll take it, Kingfish. Oh, uh, now wait a minute, Andy. Keep your big mouth shut. Wait just a minute, you uh, Don't let's rush into the thing. Uh, let me feel the Turk's wings here. Mm-hmm. Uh, done a lot of flying, too, didn't it, Carl? <laughs> Tell you the truth, Kingfish, I don't know. I just met the bird three days ago. <laughs> well, I'm going to take it, Kingfish. Andy, will you please wait a minute? I'm just trying to help you here. Uh, turn the turkey over on the other side, will you, Carl? Yeah. Uh, you know, Andy, I don't like the shape of this turkey's back. Look here, Kingfish, we ain't buying for its figure. <laughs> yeah, but all them things count. Hey, excuse me a second, boys. I want to go out in front and raise the arm enough. All right, Carl. Listen, Kingfish. Wait a minute. Uh, 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 Come on down here, Andy, so we can talk. I, I don't want this other butcher down the other end of his. Well, Kingfish, why can't I buy that turkey? Now, look, Andy. Do whatever you want to do. It's your money. I just try to help you. I try to give you the benefit of my long turkey experiences. <laughs> it's a good turkey, though, ain't it? Well, yeah, it's a good turkey, Andy, but I like to check and double-check the thing to make sure. Well, if we... Listen, if you think the turkey is all right, why is we hemming and horn round here? Listen, Anna, it's just like when a fella is figuring on marrying some gal. She might look nice and pretty and look good in clothes and all that stuff. At the same time, you want to get a look in her mouth to make sure that you ain't go run into $50 or $100 worth of dental work. <laughs> uh, we just want to make sure that we're getting a good turkey, too. Well, I'm going to buy it, Kingfish. Okay, then, and uh, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, say, Carl, I'll take that turkey. All right, I'll put it on the scale. Hey, wait a minute. Say, Joe, what'd you do with that turkey that was right here? Well, I just told that man going out the door there. Well, Kingfish, what would you charge to stop helping me? What? Well, I'm sorry you boys missed your chance of that turkey, but I guess Joe didn't know you was thinking about buying it. Come on, Andrew. We'll go to a good butcher shop. Listen, Carl, if this is the way that you want to treat an old customer that has paid up to last July, it's okay with me. Sorry, gentlemen, we haven't had a turkey in here in ten days. We got a mailing list a mile long. No turkeys, huh? Not a chance. We don't expect any more turkeys until after the first of the year. And maybe not then. Turkeys? <laughs> Are you kidding? Yes, Henry, there uh, just uh, ain't a turkey for sale in the whole town. Yes, I know. Mrs. Van Porter was saying at breakfast this morning that the turkey situation is cute. But I didn't know it was cute as that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I could have got one, but this part-time genius here, the kingfish, helped me so much I didn't get it. Considering the source of that remark, I'm going to just ignore the whole thing. Please, boys, please, let's not have no fights. After all, we is all civilized gentlemen, you know. Oh, uh, come in, Lightning, come in. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Lightning. I thought I'd find you fellas over here at Miss Andy's office. Uh, Miss Andy, this letter come for you over at the large hall, and I thought it might be some reporting. Oh, thank you, Lightning. Well, here's from Jimmy. Oh, it is, huh? What do we say, Andy? Yes, what is in it? Say, uh, dear Uncle Andy, I don't have time to write much, but there is a buddy of mine here at camp who lives too far away to go home and visit his folks for Thanksgiving. I took the liberty of asking him to come up to New York with me and have Thanksgiving turkey dinner with us. I hope this will be okay with you, your loving nephew, Jimmy. <clears throat> well, fellas, I really got to get a turkey someplace. I ain't going to let them two boys down. Yeah, sounds like they're counting on turkey already. Gee, and I, I wish I'd known how to help you. 
I wonder if there would be anything in getting a couple of chickens and tell your nephew that the turkeys is running small this year. Well, another thing, I'd have to tell him that the turkey this year tastes like chickens, too. Yeah, I guess you would. Say, boys, I just had a thought here. Oh, uh, what was that, Henry? Well, Andy, I wonder if there's any chance of you getting the priority on the turkey. Uh, priority? Yes, I know that the Army has done took a lot of turkeys this year, which is as it should be. But it just occurred to me that as long as you was getting the turkey for your nephew and his friend who was in the Army, you might be able to get a priority. Mm-hmm. Say, yeah, that's worth trying. Where would I go? Well, I know that there's a special priority board downtown that handles the unusual things like that. I has had occasion to go there myself. As for Miss Spring Byanton. Come on, Kingfish. We is going down there right now. Did you wish to see me? Uh, uh is you Miss Spring Byanton? That's right. <laughs> uh, can I help you? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, tell Miss Byanton the whole story, Andy. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll start at the beginning. Mm-hmm. The reason we come down to the rationing boat here is on account of my nephew. You see, he's in the Army, and he's coming home for Thanksgiving. Oh, isn't that nice? I was just saying to my husband this morning that I wish Harry, <laughs> he's our nephew, was coming home for Thanksgiving. He's in a camp in the Middle West. But if he can't be, it can't be. <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> Now, uh, what I want to explain to you... On the other hand, Philip, that's my sister's son. He's stationed in Georgia. Oh, lovely boy. He looks a lot like my sister Elaine. Yeah, that's good, all right. (laughs) Uh, Go ahead, Andy. Tell Miss Byron what you want to tell her. Yeah, I'll begin at the beginning. You see, my nephew is in the Army, and he's coming home for Thanksgiving. Oh, really? Isn't that nice? Huh? I know how happy you must be. You know, I have a nephew, too. Oh, uh, yes, we know. He lives in the Middle West, and he can't get home for Thanksgiving. Oh, oh you know him. Uh, <laughs> and uh, start at the beginning again, will you? Well, uh, uh, this nephew and his buddy is coming home for Thanksgiving, and I want to give him a big dinner. Oh, uh, yeah, and we want you to help us if you can. Why, of course I will. Now, I'd suggest that the first thing you do is to get a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's what we want to see you about. Uh, you see, we ain't got no turkey. Well, if I were you, I'd hurry up and get one. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and I understand they're getting scarce. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, we hear the same rumor. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Byington, but... We can get priorities here, can't we? Oh, yes, indeed. (laughs) That's what we're here for. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, What kind of a priority was it you wanted? Tires or extra gasoline? Uh, And uh, do you think we are too far from the beginning to go back there again? (laughs) Well, we can try going back there once more. Uh, You see, uh, my nephew is in the Army. And tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day. Oh, really? Are you going to have a turkey dinner for him? (laughs) Uh, Not at the rate we're going, lady, no. (laughs) Uh, You see, like I said before, that's what we come in to see you about. Uh, uh, We can't get one in the whole city, Miss Byington, and you see, this dinner is for a couple of soldiers, and that's why we're trying to get a priority from the government on it. You see, we got all the trimmings, but the trouble is we ain't got nothing to trim. (laughs) A priority on a turkey? Yeah, it's our only chance of getting one. We done scarred the whole town. And I promise you that I won't eat none of the turkey myself. I might dip my bread in the gravy, but that's all. (laughs) Well, this is the first request we've had like this. I'd like to help. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll call up regional headquarters and see what they say about it. Oh, yeah, we'd appreciate it if you would. (laughs) You might fill out this application blank in the meantime, just in case. Okay. Name. I guess I better put Amos Jones' name and address down, too, because that's where we're going to have the dinner. Mm-hmm. That'll be fine. 
regional headquarters. Oh, Dorothy, this is Spring. Oh, hello, Spring. I called you last night. <laughs> you weren't home, your little stay out. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette and I went over to that millinery class. I'm making the most stunning hat you ever saw. Oh, you're making me so jealous. I need a hat so badly for my new coat. What kind are you making, Dorothy? Oh, it's sort of an idea of my own. It's an off-the-face turban. Oh, that should be gorgeous. Especially with your hair. Oh, uh, anything else new? No, except that I'm going over to Clara's Sunday afternoon. You going? Well, I don't know whether Frank's going to play golf or not, but I'll be talking to you before that. Goodbye. Goodbye. If there's anything that annoys me, it's some woman calling me when I'm busy and just talking about nothing. Now, uh, 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 where were we? Uh, you called her. I called her? Uh, yeah, uh, you were going to ask her if there was some way that we could get a priority on a turkey. Well, how do you like that? She hung up without telling me. You didn't ask her. I didn't. <laughs> oh, I suppose it's my fault. But it's just that that girl talks so incessantly and rambles on. What now? Hello. Spring, this is Dorothy again. You didn't tell me what you called me up for. Oh, I'm glad you called back, Dorothy. Listen, can we give out a priority order for a turkey? Well, not that I know of. At least I've never heard of it. Well, if anybody would know about it, it would be you. Well, I've never heard of it since I've been here. Well, that's all I want to know. Thanks, Dorothy. Goodbye. I'm awfully sorry, but there just is no such thing. Yeah, well, uh, thanks anyway, Miss Bynum. Uh, we sure appreciate what you try to do for us. Now, I guess the boys will just have to get along without gasoline. I mean, without a turkey. Goodbye. <laughs> No luck at the rising board, huh, fellas? No, Amos, nothing. And we even went to six more butcher shops and still couldn't get none. Yes, Amos, I'm going to tell you, I know my way around Harlem here, and I know all the ropes. But I tell you, I, I just about to give up the thing. Uh, say, I was just wondering, is there any place where we could get a wild turkey, maybe? Oh, and uh, there ain't no wild turkeys around here. What Damn. you talking about? You know, them uh, pilgrims got all of them. <laughs> they did, huh? Sure they did. Well, tell me this. Uh, does you know a pilgrim that we could call up? <laughs> oh, and uh, that was years and years ago, and uh, uh, Say, oh, by the way, did you see that letter on your desk there that come for you? Oh, no. Hey, look at here. There's another letter from Jimmy. Oh, it is, huh? Oh, say, maybe his friend ain't coming. Mm -hmm. Then if Jimmy comes up here alone, I can take him out to dinner. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead and read it then, Andy. Yeah. Dear Uncle Andy, I want to tell you that I... Now, what do I say, Andy? He's bringing three more fellas. <laughs> And at what time did Jimmy say that him and his friends would get here? Well, he say sometime around noon. So I guess they won't be here for an hour, or maybe an hour and a half yet. Uh-huh. Uh, is it anything else you need, Ruby? I'll go down to the store and get it. No, Andy, I think we have everything. And I think it's going to be a pretty nice dinner, too. Yeah, well, I bought everything I could think of. I know you did, Andy. And I'm going to fix everything just as good as I know how. Oh, yeah. There ain't no question about that, Ruby. I know that. You is a wonderful cook, but there ain't nobody that can make Frankfurters take like turkey. <laughs> oh, but I think that the boys will enjoy their dinner. Yeah, well, wait a minute. That can't be Jimmy. It's too early for you. It, it might be for me. I'll get it, Amos. <laughs> is there a, uh, a Mr. Brown here? Yes. Yes, won't you come in? Andy, there's a lady to see you. Hello, Mr. Brown. Oh, hello there. Hello. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, you you is the lady from the ration boat, ain't you? That's right, and I have a turkey for you. Here. Oh, a turkey for me? Yes. You see, we ordered our own turkey about a month ago, and this morning some friends of ours dropped in and gave us a turkey from their farm, and I want you to have it. 
Well, gee, I couldn't... And fortunately, I had this address, you know, that you put on the priority ba- blank, remember? <laughs> well, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, well, I don't know how to thank you. Uh, uh, I wouldn't take the thing for myself, but on account of my nephew and his soldier friends coming, it'll sure make it nice for them. Uh, uh, how much do I owe you for it? Oh, you don't owe me anything. It didn't cost me anything. I'm not in the turkey business. <laughs> oh, well, this sure is nice of you, lady. Yes, it, it sure is wonderful. Oh, go on. Well, I've got to run along now and start cooking my own dinner. Goodbye again. Goodbye. 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 That sure was sweet of that lady. Yeah. Now I'll really be able to give him a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, boy, am I happy. That turkey sure looks good, don't it? Look at there. Mmm. Boy, that turkey sure smell good, too. Yeah, uh, tell me this, uh, Ruby. Uh, when is you going to take it out of the oven? Oh, it's got about an hour to go yet. I hope the boys get here on time. Yeah. Look at it there, Amos. Just look at that thing. Yeah, that's something all right in. Yeah. Look at look at right there. See how it's kind of browning up on the breast there? Look at that. Yeah, look at that. This is getting brown, in it? Oh. Uh, boy, wouldn't that turkey be proud if he could see himself right now? <laughs> I just got to baste it a little more here. Yeah. Look at that gravy going over that breast. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, mm. I wonder why they don't make perfume out of that stuff. <laughs> you know, Amos, I... Uh-oh, that must be them now. Now, remember, do just like we said. Uh, okay, come on now, Ruby, come on. Oh. Yeah, and, and just when I put my hand on the doorknob, we start the thing. You ready? Happy Thanksgiving to you. you. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, I've got a special delivery letter for Mr. Brown. For, for me? Yeah. Sign right there. Oh, yeah, sir. At the lodge hall, they told me you were over here. Uh, thank you. Okay. What's the matter, Andy? You, you look sad. What is it, Andy? Yeah, well, I was sad, Amos. But I was proud, too. Uh, what do it say, Andy? It's from Jimmy. Yeah. Huh? Will not be able to come to New York. Neither will the other boys. We are leaving for a port of embarkation. By the time you get this, we will no doubt be on our way overseas. Love, Jimmy. You can really be proud of that boy, Andy. Yeah. God bless him. I sure hope he has a safe trip. How many guests did you invite over here for the turkey dinner, Andy? Seven of them. Uh, who all did you invite? I don't know their names. Just seven boys from the USO. Join us again next week at this same time for the Amos and Andy Show, at which time Amos and Andy will have as their guest the fine picture character actor, Mr. Donald Meek. 
Our program is shortwave to our armed forces overseas, wherever they may be. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for all of us and thanking the charming MGM star, Miss Spring Byington, for appearing with us tonight. One more thing before we say goodnight. A reminder that you ladies personally can save the lives of many of our fighting men without budging a step out of your kitchens. Just remember, the waste fats and greases you can save will be made into ammunition and precious sulfur drugs. But no matter how much you save, those waste fats and greases won't do anyone a bit of good until you sell them to your dealer. So don't let them hang around the kitchen. Once you've filled a can, take it right to your meat dealer. The need is so urgent that within three weeks, the waste fats and greases you turn in are at the munitions plant. Put them into any kind of tin can. Save those waste fats. Thank you, and good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.